we all know, or at least I hope we all know, like, really, really hope we all know, that the year of the Linux desktop is just a meme, and really shouldn't be taken too seriously, just like things such as the GNU copy pasta and, by the way, use Linux. But what if, for just a moment, we actually do take it seriously? What would actually need to happen to make the year of the Linux desktop an actual thing? Now, how you define your completion point is very much up for interpretation, and I know some people like to use market share. I'm not a big fan of market share, even though it's very definable, because market shares tend to fluctuate very heavily. There was a time where macOS was way more popular than Windows, but we don't now say that macOS just doesn't matter in the general zeitgeist. What I think is a more useful definition is when a regular person, not a techie person, just some regular person who wants a computer, walks into a computer store, they see the Windows section, the Mac section, and the Linux section, and all of these to them seem like viable options. But very importantly, not ruining the reason why people like you and me actually use Linux. Sure, you can replace Linux with a complete clone of Windows or Mac OS, but that sort of defeats the whole point. And a lot of this isn't going to be easily achievable by Linux users and Linux devs, and it's going to be a lot of stuff against the spirit of what Linux is. So it's going to involve supporting a lot of proprietary software that general Linux users don't really care about for the most part, but normal computer users do. Easily the most important thing is easy access to pre-built machines with Linux pre-installed. With the exception of macOS, where upgrades between operating systems is basically as seamless as possible, and in many cases just looks like a regular system update, most users don't really install a new operating system on their computer. If they bought a laptop back when Windows 7 was released, there is a very high possibility if that machine is still in use, it's still running Windows 7. Even just getting someone to install a system update is hard enough. Having to install a whole new operating system, one that you may not already be familiar with, is sort of just a non-starter for most people. Now, I am very, very aware that pre-built already exist. Whether it's a desktop or a laptop, I know they do exist. But in many cases, it's not the primary skew of that device. It's something like the XPS Developer Edition. Sure, there is this Linux version of it, but it's not the main version that is being marketed. So in online stores, it's usually in some extra page you need to already know about, or maybe it's down like three or four pages in the devices available. And then in physical stores, at least from my personal experience, I have never seen a device with Linux pre-installed. I'm sure in plenty of regions they do exist, but I can't say I've seen them. But at this point, there are companies that are Linux exclusive sellers, companies like System76 or Tuxedo Computers. The problem though is nobody outside of the Linux space knows these companies exist. If you mention one of those to a regular person, they will be completely confused. I think one thing that would help out the sale of pre-builds is sort of settling on a singular normie distro. All of the pre-builds just get sold with this one distribution because right now, if you want to buy a Linux laptop, it's going to have Ubuntu, it's going to have PopOS, it's going to have Manjaro, it's going to have Fedora, and a bunch of other things out there. And sure, if you know about Linux, it's very easy to work out what each of these different systems are actually going to do. But if you're not, all it sort of serves to do is confuse the user. Considering the popularity Ubuntu already has, that seems like the most obvious candidate. But I know a lot of people don't like Ubuntu and like this distro instead, and this is sort of why we have this problem. Everybody has their own opinion about what the distro for this use case actually would be. Considering the popularity Ubuntu already has, that seems like the most obvious candidate. But I know a lot of people don't like Ubuntu and like this distro instead, and this is sort of why we have this problem. Everybody has their own opinion about what the distro for this use case actually would be. But whatever the distro is, long gone are the days where being a computer user meant being a terminal user. Most people nowadays don't even really want to know a terminal exists. Everything they want to do needs to be achievable through a GUI. Now, there are some very, very niche use cases where you might need to open up a terminal. 
But for regular day-to-day -day stuff, whether it's installing software or getting your gaming set up and doing the tweaking you might need to do, whether it's modifying application settings, even going so far as modifying system-level config files like Windows has with the registry edit system. And on a good desktop environment, that is going to be mostly achievable. But when you're doing stuff outside of the desktop environment, it's not the standard way you interact with Linux. You're going to find a lot of applications out there that only have a text-based config file, and that's probably not going to change. But part of the reason why desktop environments are lacking in some ways is unlike Windows and Mac OS, where they have massive teams and massive funding, usually in FOSS projects, there's not always going to be someone who has any sort of training in UI design and UI QA testing. And when you don't have someone like that, you get some really weird looking interfaces which make sense to developers and make sense to people who are used to those developer sort of interfaces. But even though Linux has all of these exceptional developers, no amount of great developers are going to fix poor layout. Or in some fairly common cases, random features just missing from the GUI and having to go to the terminal instead. So far besides the first problem, a lot of these are achievable by Linux developers. But there are some other issues which are a bit harder to address. One of those being certain software people expect to be available on their computer. Whether it's Windows or Mac OS. People want to use things like the Adobe Suite or the Microsoft Suite or other software like that. And sure, there are alternatives, things like LibreOffice and Caden Live and things of that nature. But Caden Live isn't Final Cut Pro. People go to macOS specifically to use that application. Nobody's going to go out of their way to be using Caden Live. So when you buy a new printer, GPU that just launched today, a Wi-Fi card, a video capture card, or your laptop has a fingerprint reader, usually what you'd expect on Windows is just grab the drivers and it's sort of expected to work. And in many cases it does on Linux. In many other cases though, you're sort of reading forum posts trying to work out if there's any fix whatsoever. For example, with my capture card, I specifically went out of my way to find something that works with Linux. If instead I bought something like the Elgato HD60S, there was no fix for that whatsoever. Now onto some leisure time, let's talk about gaming. Valve has been pushing Linux gaming forward for about the past 10 years now, and even during the time that I have been using Linux, it has gotten a lot better. Anti-cheat is now possible on Linux with the most popular anti-cheat systems. You might not like anti-cheat, but some of those systems are used by games. More games than ever work, and some work even better than on Windows. Sure, it's still not perfect. You can't go and buy any random game on Steam, and it's 100% of the time going to work. Granted, on Windows, that is the case as well. But if we're excluding the old titles which don't play nicely on anything, if you pick a modern title and you pick it at random, on Windows, it's probably going to work. And on Linux, it's probably going to work unless it's multiplayer. And some games require a bit more tweaking than a lot of people would be comfortable with. One thing I think that Valve could really do to improve the way that Proton works is add a GUI to change the launch options. Right now, the only way we can change launch options is knowing what the commands are. You know what the documentation is, just add some buttons. Outside of Steam, it's a bit more hit and miss. Most of the other game stores don't have a Linux client, so you're relying on things like Lutris and Bottles, which are great applications with great communities behind them, but it's not always certain if the game is going to work. Now, I don't use streaming services like Netflix, but somehow in 2022, there are still issues with DRM systems like Widevine, where under certain configurations, it just doesn't let you stream video or doesn't let you stream video at the maximum quality. How this is the case, I have no idea. You have to use specific browsers, you have to make sure the features are actually enabled. In many cases, they're not by default. Otherwise, you're just not going to get anywhere. And then when you do have a problem, support really doesn't care you exist. And to wrap it up, just like how easy access to machines is incredibly important, so is familiarity when you're learning how to use a computer. 
as a kid, you probably use Windows primarily, and you can probably point to a couple of situations where you used a Mac. And if you went to try out one of the systems nowadays, sure, it'd be different than it was back then, but you have some level of experience with how that system should function. But as a kid, unless you specifically went out of your way to try out Linux, did you ever actually use it? In my case, I had no experience with it until I got to university. People will tend to keep doing and tend to keep using what they are familiar with, which in many ways is where Chromebooks and Chrome OS are sort of way ahead of general desktop Linux. They are very easy to get your hands on. You can find them in any computer store. Software access is a bit lacking, but that's slowly getting better as more applications are shifting into being web apps. You don't really have any problem with doing things like streaming Netflix. You don't really have to worry about hardware support because they are fairly locked down systems. And that's the other thing where it's a bit different from desktop Linux and sort of it's sort of a different system entirely. This is a walled garden using Linux as opposed to general desktop Linux, which is you can do whatever you want. But a lot of this stuff would be difficult to achieve and in many ways would have to take a lot of focus away from what people using Linux right now actually want from their system. So the important question is, even if this actually was achievable, is it something that you would really want to do? I would love to know your answer. And if you like this video, I'm going to go and like the video. And if you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, go check out my Patreon, subscribe to the Barrow Pay, linked in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over T available basically anywhere. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Robinson Plays. That's going to be it for me. And I'm out. <laughs>